So I think songs are really gifts. They're really like, I try to think of it as like ideas that are in the wind and they happen to pass by you. And if you grab them, then it's yours. But they're unlimited. And so thinking about the unlimited part of things instead of like the things that feel limiting in your mind is also, it's pretty freeing. Victoria Monet is here. We're celebrating the release of the new album, Jaguar 2. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's finally out. I'm just really excited. I've had it for quite some time in my little phone, my iPhone, <laughs> my Apple phone. So I'm thankful that it's just belongs to other people now. It belongs to me. I'm going to claim this yes. album. Look, it's, it's really a great album. You know, I've Thank been you. a fan for a while, but on this, I think we get to hear you unlock the next level. And one of the things that I love about just you as a person, it's when I see clips of your performances or your music videos, I see Victoria, the performer. You like Thank step you. into that mode and it's full on because you've been doing this for so long. But then yeah. the person, you're so soft spoken <laughs> and so sweet. Yeah, It's like almost hard to put the two people together, which is incredible. You know what? I think same. Because I feel like I just snap into something and maybe it's like the person that I just like an alter ego that I wish I could have. Um, you essentially like have courage. her, but without the name, essentially. Yeah, yeah, I haven't I haven't named her. I guess it's the Jaguar, <laughs> in a way. Um, but I, I was always like that, like it being in my room as an only child, like flipping from like being around family and like being like, yes, ma'am, you know, and go in my room and slam that door and I'm like doing all these moves <laughs> and recreating Michael Jackson stuff and just like, being a creative in my own space. So it's really cool and a, and actually a big step from my childhood to like actually share it. I was one of the kids that used to be like, if I sang for you, I'd be like, can you turn around? Don't look at me. <laughs> I was like so shy. So I'm just growing up, you know? That's really incredible that a person who is so shy can turn out to be such a great performer. Thank you. But we're gonna talk a little bit more of that because I think you have such a long history in entertainment <laughs> that a lot of people don't necessarily know. Um, yeah. And I want to start with the title of Jaguar. So when you released the first project a few years ago, I think your original plan was to drop it uh, in three parts, yeah. right? But I think Jaguar 2 is now going to complete it. Things change, a lot change in the world yeah. in those few yes. years. But what was it about a Jaguar? What, like, what was it that made you feel like it was the right title mm -hmm. for your project or projects? Yeah, I mean, I moved to L.A. to pursue um, artistry and, you know, just all of the things that I dreamed for myself. And, you know, life takes you in different turns. And so I ended up um, songwriting a lot more than recording my own music. And so in that position, I felt like I was behind the scenes a lot, similar to how a Jaguar operates in a jungle. They're like mysterious, you know, they're there, but they're not always seen and in the forefront. But then there's this right moment when they feel like they've, they're the huntress and they, pounds and they like you know go for what it is that they want and they like I could just imagine a jaguar behind all these monster leaves and at the right moment they just come out and they're like Rah! you know and so I feel like jaguar at, musically and sonically is my moment to do that um and just kind of step into the light be in the forefront be unafraid um and yeah just get what I came to the jungle for, <laughs> you know you know I think it's good that jaguar who actually completes the series because from what you just explained, I think that after this project, you shouldn't feel, and I don't think your core fans, your diehard fans, will feel that you are in the background anymore or playing that role. I feel like this is it. It's like, <laughs> what more do you have to prove yeah. after putting out this project? I feel like Thank you're here, you. so it completes it. And when yeah. you did the first project, Jaguar, I feel like that may have been the first time you actually gave yourself space to just focus on you. Because yeah. as you mentioned, you were writing for artists before that. Yeah. so. Coming on to the second project, what does this next step feel like after taking the time to just do Victoria? Yeah, you know what? I think it almost feels like a significant challenge for me because Jaguar 1 was received so well. And I really only try to compete with self. Like, if I'm better than I was yesterday, I do believe that if you stop growing, then you're dead, basically. So I tried to, I tried with this project to elevate it, have the same sonics. You know, like Jaguar 1 and 2 are relatives, but you see like Jaguar 2 is like an older, more developed, voluptuous older <laughs> sister. Um, and so I just really wanted to make it 
in my eyes better than Jaguar One, which I feel like I've done. So I'm I'm happy about how it's come across. And now the next step is just to see how people feel, <laughs> like what their thoughts are. Um, I keep getting tweets and things, people saying they're just some people are just discovering Jaguar One, which is so exciting. So I'm excited to see you know, just more and more people unfold the story because some people are working in retrospect. Some people will hear me for the first time on Jaguar 2 and they'll be like, oh, sh- there's a Jaguar 1 and then they'll go backwards. So which I feel like is, is kind of cool. So they'll understand the full story, like reading the book backwards somehow. And I get all of the tweets saying that un- I'm underrated. So I'm hoping Jaguar 2 changes that narrative like you were saying. So It does. I mean, we get to hear the songwriting skills, but as they pertain yes. to you, I know you sold out your first headlining show, you're mm. doing your first headlining <laughs> tour. And again, if anyone's seen you perform, girl, you can really perform. There are some people Thank who get on stage you. and they just sing and it's cool, but you yeah. really dance. You've also been dancing since mm-hmm. you were a kid. So do you feel like all of those pieces of the puzzle are now coming together for this moment? Yes, I I do. I'm so glad that I had dance background because I wonder if I was just singing if I would have an interest, you know, or or like the wherewithal or time to be able to spend as much time as I had already developed in a dance world and just strictly with like people who are serious about dancing, like Jabberwockies or, you know, just like Monsters of Hip Hop, like really professional dancers. So it also makes me have a whole other appreciation for um, people who dance artists who perform with me. I'm like, I understand how rigorous it is to use your body to express and sweat on stage for an artist. And so I'm just so thankful for every position that everybody plays from the band to the sound, lighting, like it takes a whole team to put on a show. So I'm excited for tour and I'm really excited for the people that I'm going on tour with too. Yeah, I think it's gonna be incredible for fans to hear this uh, album live. I know you really, really care about the live performance, but you know what's so interesting? I think going into this project, so we know, you know, you became a mom a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. So I think some people, and maybe even me, hitting play on the album, you know, would think that, you know, she's gonna talk a lot about the journey of motherhood. And of course, Hazel's on the album, we get to hear her. But I love that it opens with Smoke, which is one of the first (laughs) songs we heard. I was like, this is why I love Victoria. Like, I don't know if people think once you become a mom, of course, that's like the center of your life. But there's so many different facets of you still as a woman. And I feel like we still get to hear that and hear the fun side of you on the album. Yes, I love that you said that because when I was you know, listening back to the album, I'm trying to listen to it from a fan's perspective. And I would think that people would be like, oh, she's going to talk about just being completely in love and wanting to get married and like having kids, like this like white picket fence life. Um, And it's not, (laughs) it's not that. (laughs) I feel like even making the album, just even with my relationship, I had the freedom to discuss things that I may not feel currently, but they came up in the making of this album, even though I'm not necessarily in that mind set right now Mm -hmm. so I really appreciate the freedom you know from everyone to and you understand it's like being a mom does you still are your own individual you know even though you care for this beautiful gift that that has been given to you you still exist in your own right and it doesn't have to be the only thing you discuss even though it's really hard not to discuss it because when you sit down with someone you're like look at the baby pictures you know (laughs) what I mean but um yeah I'm excited for people to see and hear like what the subject matter is and find themselves in the album because it's so, there are songs about being in love, but there's songs about going outside. The party songs too, yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of like a a whole spectrum of what women feel and how we're not just one dimensional. We have so much to say. We can hear your love for music, Mm. right? It's like funk, soul, there's a lot of 70s like disco on the first project, Mm -hmm. which I really liked. And I like that on this project, and I'm sure this was a super dope moment for you. You got to collaborate with Earth, Wind & Fire on Hollywood, which is one of my favorite songs on the album. Like, What was that experience like? Really, really crazy and nerve nerve wracking. Um, So it happened on two separate occasions. So it's kind of like I got to work with them twice because Philip Bailey came in and did his vocals. But then Verdine came in on a different day to play the bass. Um, And just knowing that I'm inspired by them so much from the inception of Jaguar, to have them on it as a period, or actually as an exclamation point for Jaguar 2, 
Um, it just means so much. And then to put have my daughter on it, it feels like it covers so many generations because I listened to Earth, Wind & Fire because of my grandma. And my, you know, wow. so it's like, and she she actually passed the, the year I moved to L.A. So it feels like a very full circle, like a kiss from an angel, very like, wow. I was nervous because <laughs> Philip Bailey was asking me to like vocal produce him. Mm -hmm. I was like, mm -mm, nope, you got it. <laughs> you know exactly what to do. But it's just really nice to have an idol and um, people to look up to that also still value your opinions even after they've sold millions and ran the world in the music industry and like just done so much. So it's really, it was awesome. And especially them telling you how cool it is. Like you, you make them cool to work together. <laughs> I was like, are you sure? That's, <laughs> That's so awesome. incredible. You know, after all yeah. the work you put in to get that kind of love from artists that you look up to is amazing. And just the song itself is great. The Thank hook you. on it, again, you're writing and, and what you're talking about in it, right? Like missing yeah. all of these like little things in life that bring us joy because so much is going on and working in entertainment is really difficult. I can't Ugh. honestly imagine what it's like being an artist. I know that I'm mm. not built for it and I would never be because mm. you guys go through a lot, you know? So I feel like you expressed that on this song. Definitely. I, I think it touches a lot on the fact that even though I wrote it before getting pregnant, I think it touches on the fact that like there was fear there to like start a family and wonder what a career looks like afterwards, even, you know, just existing in a music world with a child as a woman, you know, who's supposed to be whatever stereotypes that people project onto us. So that's what I mean by like the simple things, like the one of the reasons why we're put on this earth, you know, is just to make things better for other people and commune and make generations of happiness and like just help mother earth so like some of the little things we forget about in like either the concrete jungle or like la just like in an industry full of like plants and smoke and like just harsh things so it's nice to be feel soft again and you know just think about other things besides career right. only the uh, the other parts of life yeah Literally the parts that bring you joy. Yeah. I think that's the interesting about interesting thing about success. And I think someone like you probably feels the same way. Like you're ambitious, right? You're working towards this goal, something that you're passionate on. And it sometimes it feels like with every win, it's hard to even take a moment to enjoy. You're kind of just looking at the, the next, next. And one. it's those really small, simple things that actually make you feel good. Yeah, it's it's really crazy because it's almost like the things of that are happening to us today. Like our past self, we were manifesting these things. So once we get here, how dare us not be present and like say, you know, thank you and just, you know, just gra show gratitude and think in abundance and then move on to the next thing. Because it's a really hard balance. As long as you're alive, you're going to want to do the next thing. And the moment you pass, you would have had plans probably for the next day. You know what I mean? So it's really important to just enjoy the moments, wow. you know. That's true. It's a beautiful moment of just slowing down and, and feeling centered on. Slowing level down is huge. Which slowing is hard. down, yeah. Especially it's... when you have so much to juggle right now. Yeah. How... I think the world's like that. Like, you know, we think about Instagram, Instacart, like everything is like fast, fast, fast. We're, we're motivated by instant gratification and like quick studies, you know. So to move slowly is, I think, more challenging and more artful than the quick stuff. You know. It absolutely is. You know, and as you're talking about your past self, Victoria, just over the past few years, now that, you know, you're on this second project mm -hmm. where you're, again, just focusing on you and not writing for other artists, um, you did become a mom, although that was scary at yeah. first. Like, <laughs> yeah. I imagine that you're just feeling a lot more confident mm -hmm. in yourself and all the things that you can manage and juggle at this point. For sure. It's almost like you prove it. We prove it to ourselves every day as women. We're like, oh, shoot, if I could do that, I got it. You know, like there's so much that we have to endure. And sometimes secretly and sometimes alone. So even in our own minds, without the gratification and the validation of other people, we know, like I know personally what I've been through. And if I could stand here today, great posture, shoulders back. Looking you know? amazing. Like, <laughs> thank you so much. There's so much more that can be done. So shout out to women, really. Shout out to you. <laughs> so you. on my mama, one of my favorite songs on the, the project Thank as well. You. And I was stunned 
to hear you say that you wrote that song mm -hmm. while you were dealing with postpartum depression because I can't wrap my mind around that. I also had a C-section. I was struggling with breastfeeding. I had yeah. a really, really hard time those first couple months. Yeah. And friends would reach out to check in and I would just, I would not even be able to answer. That's how terrible I was feeling. Yeah. And so I cannot, and again, a testament to your skills as a songwriter that you could write that song mm. during a period like that. Yeah. How? It's, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I feel like it was a grace of God because I like I can't even it's hard to answer that. I I was just really it was it was rough. Just even vocally, the vocal changes like after having, you know, your abdomen sliced open for through a couple layers, you know, it was just like and then breastfeeding in the studio just felt like I just didn't really know what to say and what I had to offer in a music space. So I think Songs are really gifts. They're really like, I try to think of it as like ideas that are in the wind and they happen to pass by you. And if you grab them, then it's yours. But they're unlimited. And so thinking about the unlimited part of things instead of like the things that feel limiting in your mind is also, it's pretty freeing. Um, so I guess maybe that's when the 10,000 hours kicked in. <laughs> it's just like, I'm, I'm not myself right now, but the rehearsed version, the clone version of myself that I'm leaning on, <laughs> like she's helping me out right now. The angels spoke. So I'm glad, you know, that song is, I feel like it's a mix between like something that makes you want to dance, but also something that speaks light into you, which I love that combination. It doesn't feel like it, it's too preachy and you might just not even mindlessly be singing the lyrics, but even if you just sing the lyrics, you're talking good about yourself, which I think is so important for people just to... Of course to, it is. I don't yeah. think it's preachy at all. That's not a word I would yeah. ever think to use. It's just like, there's a lot of days where you're just like, I don't know if I can do this today. I'm I gotta not feeling pretend. it. I'm not, yeah. I gotta pretend. And you know, knowing what you were going through writing that, I think gives the song even more power. Yeah. You know, to to just help motivate on those for days sure. that are that are pretty low. I hope you feel proud of yourself. For like When I you look do. back at the songs that you've written throughout your career, both for yourself and for other artists, can you see the progress? Oh, for sure. I've listened to my first song ever, ever. And it's so crazy because I, I hear like, like there was a lot of harmonies in that song, my very first one, but I've, I sang it so differently and my choices were young and so it's just really cool it's almost like I have songs as diary entries to listen back to and be like that's what I was going through maybe the, I was listening to this album a lot because this kind of sounds like that so it's kind of like a nice little record and file cabinet um of the ways that I've existed in the past so I love that um even some demos that have not come out <laughs> really wild do you still have them stashed somewhere where you could go back and listen I have some of them I have some of them. Um, there was a couple of producers that I worked with that, um, so sessions that I don't even remember and they'll send them to me like, you remember this? I'm like, yo, it's so crazy. Like some things that you could, it's crazy that you could do something in your life and then forget about it. <laughs> it's a little bit scary, but there's some things that I don't even remember doing, but um, I'll hear them and be like, wow. it's just like, you could just hear so much growth. So It's part of the 10,000 hours. So even if you don't necessarily remember it, that work was put in. It's yeah. not, it's not lost. The pen it's not was exercise. Yes, yeah. for sure. You know, uh, when you listen to the to this album, are there songs that you are most proud of writing? I feel like I've talked about the ones I like. Some of them, there's still yes. a lot more. But like for you, which songs do you put on and you're like, I did that? I really like How Does It Make You Feel? I like, it feels like timeless to me. And that's one of the things that I try to really create something that's not necessarily dated by the year 2023 like certain slang or current events or whatever so it feels like I may like it in 20 years 30 years on vinyl just listening to it and just about love which is such a fundamental fundamental thing in life um that it's just a human thing so I feel like it it spans across different generations I also, I can't not be proud of uh, Hollywood because of Earth, Wind & Fire and Hazel. And maybe the song will always be somewhat relevant because there's always something going on in the world. So just a time to sit back and reflect will always, I think, make sense and be necessary. 
and really just my collaborators, like collaborating with my friends mm -hmm. is awesome. It's not like I got like an A&R to be like, yo, this producer's hot. You should work with him. <laughs> it's really my friends. And so that's the best part about it is like making something magical that I feel um, and creating memories with some of your favorite people in the world at the same time. Like Lucky awesome. Day, you worked with Dee yes. Mile again on this album too, yes. right? And even Kei Trinata. As soon as I put on our ride, I was like, there's a kind of Kei Trinata <laughs> beat on this you, album. He's so signature. It's so signature, Kei Trinata. And we have more music, which is so crazy. I'm like, can you want to do a project or Please something? Please do. Please <laughs> you do. Know? I would love it. You two are an amazing vibe together. Thank you. I would love that. He's in the studio. He's like just the same, like very calm surprisingly because if you think about Kei Trinata, it's like it sounds like energy and good but he's just so chill as a person but it's really cool the juxtaposition of what so you two are the is. quietest people in the studio essentially is everyone asking you to speak up all the time you're that <laughs> soft spoken I'm still trying to wrap my head around no, it it's literally, really amazing the most common question I get is what what did you say <laughs> like repeat that so I say most things twice because people are like speak up um but I think that's one reason why I really look up to Janet is because she's very shy and soft-spoken, but then has that fire on stage. Mm -hmm. I guess Michael, like the Jacksons may have that quality overall. Um, and maybe Aaliyah too, just like a very like chill, even keel personality, but still makes room in, in the world for musically without having to be a big vocalist like Whitney or Mariah. So I, I identify more with, you know, the softer those artists yes you know it's funny because when we think of hollywood or just music we don't think of these soft-spoken personalities really yeah. or like what it's like for artists who are naturally like that you mentioned mm -hmm. like you were shy when you're little dealing with an industry that's so forward facing like yeah. you mentioned having to be on social and having this big personality has that been easy for you is it something you've had to adjust to i had to grow into it for sure um i always wanted to it's almost like it, I even fought within myself because I'm like, I want to be on an arena and a stadium stage and I want to do this, but I'm just scared. I'm too shy. So I really had to work up that performance endurance to do that or even speak to you today. Like this confidence, you know, like this is, it's a new thing. Like Talking as, to me? As si yes, absolutely. As 16 year old Victoria, she would be behind this couch. <laughs> like, can you hear me from the microphone? But it's just, um, it's just, I, I guess a part of growing up um, I think about even an artist like Frank Ocean who's like very elusive and I understand or Summer like she, how she pushes herself to be even be on stage or like be in front of people but she still can be a creative and make the most amazing music and same thing with Frank so we have to realize I guess in the diaspora of artists that there's still different personality types um so like everyone has their own place and their own style. And with all of the different types of people in the world, I think that you can find yourself in each person. So that's how I feel about Janet. It's just like finding my qualities in her more so than maybe some other superstars. That's such, <laughs> that yeah. is such a great, a great way to look at it. And again, understand more that you just have like a tremendous respect for you know the legends that came <laughs> came before us and yes you know, even on the albums we're getting to hear you on songs with Buju, mind crazy <laughs> you know it's really like something crazy. i would i would really really never expect and i know that a lot yeah. of it is like the influence you had growing up and songs like your mom was playing you know yes. when you think about your legacy 10, 15, 20 years from now. Of course, none of us can predict the future. Yeah. Things happen and we just have to move and flow with it. But what would you like your legacy to be? I feel like we're still so early on. You know, at this point yes. with Jaguar 2, you're still <laughs> feeling like, you know, you're just like exposing yourself yes. to the world. You I'm know? a new artist still. It's crazy. Like 10, 15 years in. So yeah, what do you see for yourself? Just to touch other avenues of, of like wellness and entertainment and beauty. So like Rihanna, <laughs> like a beauty line, skincare, something probably to do with um, you know, food, like trying to teach gardening or something that helps with like wellness and food stuff. I've, I'm really a foodie, so I want to combine really great tasting stuff with like health so you don't have to submit to Big Pharma, <laughs> a whole other conversation. Um, and... 
stuff, life on film. So like acting, writing for for screen, uh, the big screen, and music for the big screen. Wow. Um, pending, they fix. You know what's going if the on. Stri- yeah. Yeah. Over. Those are incredible. Yeah. Those are some really great goals. Yes. Writing. So lots to do. Yeah. Books. A children's book. Listen, I think <laughs> once a writer, always a writer. If yeah. You can write these these really dope songs that you've been writing for so long. It makes sense that you could translate that into other avenues, right? It's just yes. getting started. I feel like is a challenge. Acting, though, again, going back to you being a shy person, <laughs> it, it just that seems like I don't know if when you were fifteen years old, you could have imagined yourself being brave enough to be an actor. I wanted to be like Dorothy Dandridge. Yes. <laughs> So yeah. it was always in the cards. Yeah, I told my grandma I wanted to be a triple threat, and I don't even know what, where I heard that word, but I was like, singer, dancer, actress. But yes, I always saw like a multi-hyphenate career. I see yeah. it for you. Thank you. We're there, we're there. Like yes. Jaguar 2 is incredible, and I think whatever you want to do next, you. you know, that's, it's completely, completely up to you. So how are rehearsals going for tour? How are you feeling? I'm really like excited and just nervous just seeing how fast things sold out. I just want to give the people a bang, like just come out swinging, like just the best show, you know, they've seen in the longest time, just really for them to have an amazing experience. So I'm going to give my all. Um, It's going to be a fun time. I'm going to just try my best not to cry nightly, (laughs) really. (laughs) For a couple of songs, that's fine. Also, don't throw anything, please. Yeah, (laughs) listen, Victoria, are you going to fight some fans if they throw things at you? Because I think you should. Or I'll come fight on your behalf. I don't think I I would. I don't think I would fight. I'd probably just talk it out. Yeah, you're too nice. She would give like a nice little speech. Guys, I think this is why you should not. (laughs) Would you want me to throw something? Would you want someone to throw something at your mom? Well, I'm Hazel's mom and you shouldn't throw (laughs) things at me. Or I could just make a whole like shield <laughs> you know how they have at top golf the screen just drop one of those things like can't get what you want i can't touch me <laughs> yeah it's gonna be amazing <laughs> look congratulations on jaguar too thank you it's so an incredible much. project i hope you have thank a great you. time on the road i'm hoping i can catch a show and I'm, please come please let's party let me know i'll be here <laughs> New can't York. forget about the party girls right <laughs> let's go <laughs> i love it all right you can check out the full album jaguar 2 from victoria monet now streaming in spatial audio on apple music hey